one or two more minutes uh, for other people to join and then we'll get started. Should we um, get started, Elizabeth? Yeah, I think we we have everyone on. Okay. <clears throat> okay, well, hi. Again, this is Carissa Janis. Um, I'm at HUD. I'm in the headquarters office in Washington, D.C. I'm the staff person responsible for um, managing and um, growing the Family Self-Sufficiency Program in the Office of Multifamily Housing at HUD. Um, uh, thank you all for joining us on this webinar. The webinar is to provide information on the technical assistance that we have available now to owners and management agents of multifamily assisted housing to help them um, launch a family self-sufficiency program. Um, joining me um, and who actually will be doing a good part of the presentation today are our technical assistance providers. Uh, we have Jeff Lubell, who's from APT Associates, and Chelsea Panucci, who is from Comping Compass Working Capital and they will tell a little bit more about themselves and their companies. Uh, and they'll explain how the technical assistance, what it is and how it's provided and how it would assist you. Um, and we are hoping to leave lots of time for questions. And we will, we will just in a moment instruct you on how to uh, submit questions. Um, I do want to mention that um, HUD has had a family self-sufficiency program that has served public housing residents and individuals who hold housing choice vouchers for more than 25 years. Um, and uh, again, the Office of Multifamily Housing is separate from public housing. So even though that program has been operating for many, many years in public housing, it is really brand new for multifamily assisted housing. And again, most of our Assisted housing is projects that have project-based project -based Section 8. So while we welcome participation and interest um, from public housing authorities on, part, uh, uh, on behalf of their public housing units and their housing choice voucher holders, um, this technical assistance is specifically for as I said, owners of owners and management agents of privately owned assisted housing because it's just so so new. It's so new to us. And the family self sufficiency program is new and technical assistance is new. And that's why we thought it would be helpful to have this um, webinar. Okay, so um, we'll just discuss a couple couple logistical things on how to um, submit questions and then we will continue. Thank you, Carissa. This is Elizabeth from, uh, Giardino from APT Associates and just a few housekeeping items. This webinar will be recorded and posted on HUD Exchange. And uh, during the webinar, please submit any written questions that you have in the WebEx itself using the Q&A box. You can find the Q&A box at the top right hand of your WebEx screen. You may need to click the down arrow to open up this feature. Uh, and then our presenters will respond to questions in the second half of this session. You may also email questions to the HUD multifamily FSS inbox at mf underscore fss at hud.gov. All right, thank you. So Jeff, um, can you, can you, um, can you start us off, please? 
Yeah, sure. Uh, Elizabeth uh, and Kirsten, can you hear me okay? Mm. <laughs> could be can? better. Good. Oh, it could be better? Uh, <laughs> well, that's it. Um, sorry. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll try to talk louder, but that's about as, uh, as good as I think I'll be able to do. So I'm um, really excited uh, to be here today. My name is Jeff LaBelle. I'm the Director of Housing and Community Initiatives at Aft Associates. And we, along with Compass uh, Working Capital, are, are the technical assistance providers here. Um, first, let me just tell you a little bit about the Family Self-Sufficiency Program. So this is, this is really one of the jewels in the HUD program inventory. This is, I think, a really exciting program that can help your families to increase their earnings and build savings and ultimately make progress towards financial security. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about, you know, kind of the mechanics, but basically, you know, it's a program that families enroll in and set their own goals, and, um, and then they work with a coach over time to help them achieve their goals, and they get, as part of that, an escrow account that, help, that grows as their earnings grow, and so this is an opportunity for them to build savings that they can then use to, uh, you know, achieve their financial objectives, such as buying a home or starting a business or saving for an education or buying a car, but it's also something that, that they can use, hopefully, to be better tenants and to uh, pay the rent on time, and so helping you avoid uh, re late rental payments and eviction actions. So ultimately, uh, you know, this is, uh, I think, a really good opportunity, both for the families who participate, but also for owners. Uh, so if you're interested in increasing the economic mobility and the financial stability of your residents, uh, this is really, I think, a unique opportunity to do that and have kind of a framework uh, and a structure uh, that, that HUD has established that you could administer, um, you know, that includes funding for the escrow accounts, um, you know, built into the, into the Section 8 uh, uh, contract. So exciting opportunity, and um, we're here to help you make this real. Can you go to the next slide, please? Right. So um, we said before that APT and, and COMPASS are your technical assistance providers. So just a little bit about how this works. Um, we are in, uh, we have a, a cooperative agreement, APT has a cooperative agreement from HUD, and we got this by participating in a competition. Uh, so APT is a uh, socially motivated research and consulting firm uh, specializing in uh, a whole series of different social programs, including um, uh, project-based and tenant-based rental assistance and, and uh, economic self-sufficiency programs like the Family Self-Sufficiency Program. Um, and so uh, the way this works is that HUD tasks us with specific uh, projects, and uh, we enter into an agreement with them to do these projects, and we have these work plans that set out the projects. And one of these work plans calls for us to work directly with staff at HUD-assisted multifamily housing developments to prepare for and launch an FSS program. Um, we have engaged uh, to help us with this work a, uh, a nonprofit organization called Compass Working Capital. Uh, you are, many of you are probably familiar with, with Compass. They are one of the, I would describe them as one of the leaders in the field of uh, FSS in the multifamily world. And they'll tell you a little bit more about their work, but they've already helped to implement and provide technical assistance for other project-based Section 8 FSS programs that have, have um, been uh, in operation now in, in several other places. So um, just a, uh, I think it's a good team. Um, and the main thing you should know is that, is that uh, our client ultimately is HUD, uh, and so they will determine essentially the scope of the services we provide, but they have engaged us to work directly with you. and. Um, uh, to help uh, a select number of organizations to uh, start their FSS programs. So next slide, please. I I'm going to give you a brief overview. Um, can you do the next slide, please? Uh, a, a brief overview of kind of what that TA support will include, and then Chelsea um, will, uh, from Compass will kind of drill down. But just a, a sense of the kinds of, of, of support that will be provided to the selected organizations. Uh, you'll have opportunities to learn from your peers, um, and that will be done virtually, so you, uh, you won't necessarily need to travel to get that. You can get that uh, online. Uh, you'll have direct one-on-one -on -one assistance um, with, with uh, helping you to navigate some of the processes of, of setting up a, a program. Um, there is an online training that Compass has, has developed that you'll have access to as part of this 
and then there'll be an on-site site visit to help you with the program launch as you get closer to that period of time. So among other topics, we'll be helping you identify sources of funding to run the program, uh, understanding how you can structure the program in different ways to achieve the objectives, uh, helping you think about how to identify and align all the key stakeholders, um, because ultimately this is not a program that you will administer only on your own. You really do need to refer uh, clients to other uh, service providers in the community, and it's really important to have strong partnerships. Um, you also, in order to start the program, you need to have an action plan that HUD approves, and so we'll be providing you with guidance on how to write and implement uh, an implementable HUD compliant action plan. Um, there's a whole series of policies and programs and procedures that you'll need to develop, and we'll help you think about that. And uh, uh, we'll, in particular, we'll be helping you think about how do you set up and maintain the FSS escrow accounts. So these are the accounts that grow as families' earnings grow uh, who are participating in the program, and they can have access to them when they graduate from the program, but also on an interim basis based on rules that you develop. Um, so uh, it, it's really a, a pretty comprehensive set of, uh, of assistance. I should stress that there's no requirement that you go through this technical assistance in order to start an FSS program. If you are all set and you're ready and you want to get going and you don't want to wait for us, by all means, um, go ahead and get started. But if you're looking for help and you've been saying, wow, this is an interesting opportunity, but I really need some help uh, 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 getting it started, then I think you should think about uh, applying for the opportunity to receive this technical assistance. And as part of this, you'll get assistance uh, designing data collection processes so you can complete the HUD performance report and, and really planning and managing your, your launch program. So that's kind of a high-level overview. I'm going to turn now to uh, Carissa to talk about the uh, funding options for this program. Okay, thank you, Jeff. That was very helpful. <clears throat> so usually people are asking, can you show me the money? Um, at this time, um, uh, um, Congress has not appropriated grant funds for multifamily housing to provide to grant to owners and management agents. Grant funds, uh, at least in, in the public housing program, have been are used primarily to pay the salary of a FSS program coordinator. We are hoping to get grant funds in the next couple of years, but right now there are none. And this is one of the reasons that we are starting on this technical assistance effort because we realize that some people may need a little a little bit more help, and certainly possibly finding where they can find additional funds to help support the role uh, of the program coordinator. Um, we, a, a small amount of our project-based Section 8 properties have residual receipts that can be used uh, to, to fund the program coordinator. Residual receipts are basically excess rental subsidy that um, the owner agent um, receives at the beginning of each month, but doesn't end up needing to cover their operating costs for that month. So if there are some that are remaining, they accumulate and HUD allows owners to use those rece receipts for a, variety of, for a variety of purposes, including funding a FSS program coordinator. But unfortunately, that doesn't, uh, if, <laughs> There, there aren't a lot of properties that have that. So besides that, otherwise, um, you know, certainly any other funding that um, you all may have from any other sources, um, I do believe that, again, there will be some um, guidance in terms of looking for third-party funding, looking at philanthropies, um, and really there are ways um, you know, there are ways to figure this all out. Um, maybe you have a dis uh, existing staff uh, that can be that can be used. Um, so I think um, you know, if there are funding questions, you're not quite sure, you know, where exactly the funding what it, what what it's needed for. How much do you need? Do you actually need it? Those are questions that can be. Um, answered by our technical assistance providers, and they can assist people in looking for additional funding. 
Um, okay, so I'm going to go to the next uh, slide. Carissa, okay. before, before yeah. you do that really quickly, yeah. can you just comment on the funding for the escrow account? Do they have to pay for that too? Oh, okay, okay. Right, right. So, no, so so the the owners, housing owners, do not do not contribute any money to the escrow accounts. The escrow accounts are just the incremental amount of money that the residents would otherwise have to pay in rent if, as a result of their participation in the FSS program, they've increased their earned income. But HUD continues to provide the same subsidy amount for those units. So the owner will continue to receive the same subsidy amount uh, regardless of the family's participation uh, in the program. So they won't see any reduction in funding as a result of, of administering escrow accounts. Thanks. Yeah, no, I think that's a great feature that there is essentially an incentive for families to increase their earnings that HUD is paying for. Uh, the price of that is that the local agencies need to figure out how to fund the, the, the services that go along with it. Okay, so um, on to the next, the next slide. Um, you know, I, I understand from talking to our uh, very accomplished, accomplished and experienced technical assistance providers that there are some things that would be good to think about to determine if your company or your organization and your properties would be a good fit for the FSS program. And, you know, one consideration is, you know, do you have staff that would be that will be supportive? That might be that we hope would be enthusiastic. Um, that would include, importantly, on-site staff who wouldn't have a lot of additional responsibilities, but you know, we may just want them to to be supportive and help help residents. They would certainly do the income income recertifications that are that are needed. Um, you know, I do have accounting staff that would be. Um, Amenable to uh, figuring out escrow accounts. Do you have a? Do you have somebody who, who, in a managerial position, might be willing to, you know, oversee the program, whether it's um, provided through your uh, organization or company, or whether you um, contract out to a, a third-party provider. So, so just generally, does the management company have staff that would be enthusiastic? Um, those are on, uh, you know, on the ground at the site. Will, will they be willing to work with you? And again, and 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 and, and um, motivate residents to join. Um, and the other thing is just thinking about your property itself. Um, you know, um, think about think about. The extent that you know the residents in these in your properties, and do you think people would be interested in participating in the program? Do you have a property where you think a, a lot more people would be interested than in some other property for you know who knows what reason? Um, um, you know, um, we found that certainly um, where operations are going well at a property, and residents are about as happy as a resident. A resident could be, and uh, you know your staff have good uh, re re staff have good relationships with the residents. Um, all the all of the, those things would be important. Um, um, so so yeah so so would your residents be interested? Do you have good relationships with your residents? Uh, you know just all uh, you know that that sort of. Um, Thing would make a property maybe um, a little bit provide a, be a better basis, may, uh, provide pro possibly a be better um, basis for success. So I'm not saying you must have these things. We're just saying the, these are the kind of the characteristics that have helped people succeed in the past. And the other thing is just knowledge of other community service providers and relationships that you may have with other community service providers. And it's not essential. That's why the technical assistance is here to help you reach out to those service providers. But any any you know any involvement that you have in your local community certainly would help you get started. 
So you know, just keep those things in mind. Some of these things are listed also in the request for interest application. Um, and just one more time again, these are not requirements, just things to think about um, to, to determine if you think your program w would succeed. Okay, so we're going to just tell you a little bit more about what the technical assistance uh, is going to include. Uh, and then we will, as I say, go um, to questions. So Ch Chelsea will um, provide you with a, a lot of additional helpful information. Thanks, Krisha. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, before we get started, I'll actually just tell you a little bit about um, Compass, and then I'll dive into what we're going to cover in, in technical assistance. Um, so Compass is, a, as Jeff mentioned, a nonprofit financial services organization. Uh, we provide financial coaching and savings programs that support families with low income to build assets and become more financially secure. Um, so specifically, the work we do with FSS, in, in 2010, we developed and launched a new asset building and financial capability model to expand the scope and impact of FSS. Um, currently, we operate FSS programs with a variety of public housing authorities and uh, multifamily housing owners in the Northeast. Um, and we've also um, provided training, as Jeff mentioned, to other organizations on our program model. And also to date, Compass has launched more multifamily FSS programs than any other single organization in the country. So we're excited to share all of what we've learned with you um, and just look forward to supporting the growth of new FSS programs with this opportunity. So I'm going to talk just a little bit about what the technical assistance will entail. Um, as you can see on this slide, we're making available nine months of technical assistance to up to 10 owners and agents inter interested in launching new FSS programs. Um, the TA that APT and Compass will provide will be pretty multifaceted. We'll be hosting um, a series of webinars on topics that we believe are core to FSS program launch. So that will be from designing your program scope of services and writing your action plan to developing a marketing strategy and then you know, guidance on what you should actually cover in appointments when you start meeting with families. Um, these webinars will then be followed by individual technical assistance where Compass and Apt will meet with your staff to make sure you have what you need to actually progress forward. Um, Compass also has an online launch course that we'll make available to all owners in this cohort. And the training modules in this course are really um, a complement to the webinars and will give you the actual tools to make the progress that, we, that we've described. So, for example, we have templates that will help you, that you can use to develop your FSS program manual. We have example postcards and letters and flyers that you can use to adapt or adapt to um, do outreach to your families, um, and then a bunch of other resources that will help you actually go through the implementation process. And all of these tools have been tried and tested by our own staff and our local programs. Uh, the last piece, as Jeff mentioned, um, for owners in the cohort. We'll, um, Compass and Apt will be making in-person visits to your team to ensure that you have everything that you need, the expertise and the tools to actually launch your program when the time comes. So these visits will be pretty customized to the individual owner's needs, but will likely cover topics like team workflows, enrollment processes, and even down to sort of, you know, like how do you actually um, explain the FSS contract for participation to, to a resident who so will have, you know, our staff there so you can actually do that live and get some, get some hands-on practice. Excellent. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, the request for interest and the actual TA application as well. Um, the RFI, as Elizabeth mentioned, is available on the HUD Exchange website at the link below. Um, the site also has a lot of other helpful resources and information about what you can expect when taking on the responsibility of an FSS program, so I also encourage you to explore those. Um, the actual application can be found at the end of the RFI, and we'll ask you some basic questions about your organization and the property or properties that you've selected for this opportunity. Um, we're also asking you to tell us a bit about the, what steps, if any, that you've taken to date to launch an FSS program. Um, so this application should take mo no more than 20 minutes, um, and you can submit the completed application to the email address uh, on this slide, which of course is also at the end of the RFI. So I want to talk a little bit about selection criteria, which you may have already seen if you reviewed the RFI. Um, to be eligible for this technical assistance, owners and agents 
Um, must first and foremost uh, own or manage properties that are designated for families and subsidized through project-based Section 8 assistance. So this is really important um, because residents that receive a project-based project-based rental assistance at your property are the are the ones who are eligible for um, your specific FSS program. So their other subsidy types are actually not eligible for the FSS program that you start. So we want to make sure you select properties where that's the case. Uh, second, uh, you must be able to identify properties where FSS can be implemented successfully. Um, as um, Carissa shared, and then also in the RFI, we provided with you some we provided you with some guidance on where and where we've seen FSS programs be most successful and the qualities and the properties where that that tends to be the case. And then finally, um, we want you to express a commitment to participate actively in technical assistance. So. Taking on an FSS program is a responsibility, um, and I think first and foremost that's because you're now accountable to families who are depending on you to deliver a good program. And so it wouldn't be fair if you're cutting corners or thinking about FSS as an afterthought or a side project. So we really want you to, to show that commitment in your application. Um, so since we think we will probably receive more applications than we can accept um, that meet this criteria, we've also identified some selection preferences. So first, we'll be looking at the size of the property you selected for technical assistance. Uh, we've found um, that larger properties are often better resourced and better equipped to absorb um, the initial administrative costs to launch the first FSS program in a portfolio. Um, and frankly, launching at a site where there are more residents who are eligible, um, of course, it increases in the enrollment potential. At Compass, we see programs reach between 30 and 40 percent of eligible families enrolled. Um, but it also just gives your staff involved in FSS more opportunities to learn and keep their skills sharp to better serve families. Second, uh, we'll also be looking at whether or not you've taken any preliminary steps to develop a program at the principal property that you've designated. So I think two important examples of these types of steps that are listed here are whether or not you started to explore or secured funding for your program, or you've identified the staff that will deliver services to your family. I just want to mention one piece about these um, preferences before we move to the next slide. Um, not meeting either of these will certainly not disqualify applications, but they are factors that we want to consider if, if many applications meet all of the criteria. Um, if you have a site where you've already taken steps to launch FSS or thought about how you would staff or fund the program, but it doesn't have 100 eligible units, I think we would probably still recommend identifying that site if you feel that it's really strong in your application. From my perspective, I think my colleagues would agree, you and your team all stand to benefit a great deal more from the technical assistance we can provide if you've already laid some of that groundwork. Next slide. <coughs> um, so before we move to questions, I just want to share a little bit about the application process and timeline. So as you know, the RFI opened last week and it closes on October 8th. Uh, we'll be reviewing all of the applications after this deadline and may contact you for a phone interview between the middle of October and the middle of November. Uh, this call would be a chance for you to ask more questions about the opportunity and for us to learn more about your team, the property you've chosen, and your readiness. And then selected applicants will be notified by the middle of November. Uh, we're planning to begin TA in early December. Uh, I, can, I can sense that folks might be cringing at the, the idea of starting a new project at the beginning of December, so I just want to mention that I think the December technical assistance will likely be pretty introductory um, and just lay a lot of the groundwork for the work that we want to start doing um, in, in January when we hit the ground running. So we know that it can be hard to schedule around the holidays, and we just want to make sure that we've We've sort of gotten everyone um, introduced to the technical assistance and some of the initial work that we'll do so we can really um, get going full steam ahead in January. And then technical assistance will wrap up in August. So I think we are ready for questions, um, but before we do, uh, we also have Juliana Stewart, uh, who's the Vice President of Community Impact at the Preservation of Affordable Housing, joining us on the call today. Um, Compass and POA have been working together for about four years, launching and developing FSS programs across POA's portfolio. Um, so through this process, Juliana and her, and her team have developed just a great deal of expertise 
about what it takes to operate high quality FSS programs from the owner agent side of the house. Um, and it's also through the work that Compass has done with POA that we have really learned a great deal about what it takes to launch multifamily programs well. So um, I just want to, Juliana, I think we'll be available for questions during the Q&A, but I just want to turn it over to her now. Juliana, maybe you could uh, just speak for a couple of minutes about POA's FSS work and why it's a priority for the organization and um, how it's impacted property operations and, and life for your residents. Sorry, let me unmute Juliana. One moment. While she's doing that, um, again, please submit questions online, and if you would like to email them, please email them to mf underscore fss, and uh, we will be making note of everybody's questions and posting, uh, we have a sort of we have a Q, we have an FAQ on our page for cohort applicants, and we will be adding questions to that. Hi, this is Juliana. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can. Yes. Great. Um, so thanks, Chelsea. Um, and um, you know, from Post perspective, FSS is uh, has been one of the best kept secrets, um, I think, in multifamily housing and asset building. And so uh, Poe is really excited to see um, this resource coming out to get more owners involved. And um, we've been working with Compass to, to do outreach to other owners for the past couple years. And I will gladly share my contact information if any owners want to reach out to, to me to learn more about what that experience is like um, as the owner, operator, um, and so just a little bit about us, um, POA is um, a nonprofit owner and operator of about 11,000 apartment homes, um, and we also do our own property management. So as you're thinking about putting together an FSS action plan, um, I can kind of speak to the perspective of um, an owner and manager. Um, and in addition, uh, we run resident services that we call Community Impact, and that's an important part of our mission and an increasingly important part of our mission. Um, so when we uh, launched our FSS program uh, just over three years ago with Compass, um, I don't think we fully understood just how powerful the program was. Um, we knew that it was a great way to help residents save, um, but I think we've learned a lot about how pairing this program with financial boosting, like what Compass offers, um, can really accelerate families' progress towards their goals. Um, so that was really a key learning, that was really exciting. And I think we've uh, started to see a lot of evidence of how the FSS program can support property operations and um, kind of our core business as a property management company. So um, FSS is a really great way to incentivize residents to pay their rent on time or communicate a change with their property manager or ask questions if they don't understand something. And, and um, FSS coordinators and financial coaches are really great um, kind of allies and coaches and supports for residents um, in that way. So we hear great things from our property managers. I think it's really exciting for them to be able to welcome a new family to a cool community and say, here's this great resource that can not only help you be successful here, but help you prepare for what's next. Um, so those have just been some other really positive consequences of doing the FSS program. Um, we also learned a lot about how, like what it takes to implement. So just to get a sense of scale, we have um, 10 different properties that currently have um, FSS programs in operation. We have a few more in the works. Um, and we do offer um, financial coaching along with the FSS coordination through Compass Working Capital, through other asset building partners, and in some cases through our own staff. Um, and so as we've grown, we've developed different tools largely in collaboration with Compass. So a lot of the learning that we've had um, I think they're they're also able to share with other owners. So, um, but if for anyone who's interested in learning more about kind of what it takes, um, you know, inside your organization to to really have all the pieces to to put this together. Um, like I said, I'm always happy to talk in more detail, um, and happy either through the presenters or or at a later date um, share my contact information. Great, thank you, Juliana. That was really helpful, and we're so happy to hear that things are going well. And I know that you're 
uh, expanding as we speak. So it's great. Um, all right, so we will take questions in just a moment. I just I wanted to clarify one thing about the Family Self-Sufficiency Program for those people who may not be experts. Um, the, uh, the housing owner agent, when administering a program, is responsible for, of course, managing the escrow account, which we discussed a bit, which is the savings that the residents accrue. And, and they're responsible for, for providing um, uh, case management and coaching. And case management and coaching would include referrals to community uh, community based services like you know vocational vocational opportunities, child care, variety of things, transportation, um, referring people to you know uh, different educational institutions. Um, so the, the the idea is that HUD, whether we're giving a grant or not giving a grant as in this case, we, we wouldn't be providing the actual services. We would be referring residents to services available in the community. But the basic, the basic work um, that's, that's part of the FSS is, again, the case management and coaching. And that would be done by a family self-sufficiency program coordinator. And um, I think maybe it was mentioned, um, management companies could hire a program manager. They could assign one of their current existing staff to be a program manager. Or you could uh, contract with a third-party provider, such as Compass Working Capital. So um, I have no email questions yet. Um, so Elizabeth, if you have some. Yes, we have uh, received a few questions from participants. And as a reminder, you can submit uh, questions in the chat box or in the Q&A box. You can find that at the top right corner of your WebEx screen. So uh, the first question is, uh, who from the organization would be required to be involved in the peer learning sessions or technical assistance? Chelsea, can Chelsea. you um, answer that? Yeah, this is Chelsea. I can take that question. Um, that's a great one. Um, and as you uh, may perhaps you ask that question because you can sense that there are actually a lot of folks who call. Um, so, you know, there are a few different groups that are pretty important to, to the FSS program. So, of course, there's the program delivery team, whoever's delivering services to your family. The FSS coordinator, maybe you have a program manager, um, your resident services team, or an, a separate organization. Those folks, if you are really ready to dig in on, on an actual, like actually launching your program, are gonna be really important for us to train on actually how to deliver a program. Um, it's also really important to, of course, get your property management and accounting staff involved. So those folks are going to be responsible for, um, for escrow account administration um, and will work closely with the program delivery team um, to make sure that information is accurate and gets communicated um, correctly to families enrolled. Um, and, and, you know, depending on how your organization is structured, it's a little bit hard for us to say you need the director of this or the vice president of that involved, but we really, really recommend at the beginning of the work that you're doing for FSS, laying the groundwork and aligning stakeholders to be pulling in more senior staff. So if you have a vice president of property management or a director of accounting, having those folks in the room for these initial conversations where you're actually building buy-in and uh, goodwill for the program is just really, really critical. And then once kind of like the systems and buy-in is in place, work really transitions day to day to more junior staff who are delivering services and maybe actually processing vouchers for the properties, um, site accountants and program managers, those types of folks. Um, but those are the three main kind of main groups that are involved in, in the program. Thank you. And here's a related follow-up question. How much time and resources does an FSS program require of an owner's accounting department? Mm. Oh. That's a great question. Also, I can um, share a little bit about what we've actually already shared in the outreach materials, and then Juliana would love your perspective about this too, because I think that mm. you 
have had, you had one perspective sort of when you were just launching, when you just had FSS at a few sites, and then it's kind of evolved over time as you've grown. Um, so I think in the outreach, in the outreach that we shared with you, the RFI, um, we estimate that it's about 10 to 20 hours of training for your accounting team in order to get their system set up and ready to go for FSS. And then depending on the property size, it's about one to three hours of work per month. Maybe Juliana, if you want to add anything to that, would love to have your contribution. Yeah, I'd absolutely affirm that. I think for the purposes of for the purpose of getting engaged in this cohort, if you're an owner that wants to um, pilot an FSS program and participate in this effort and learn about what it would look like, and you know, haven't necessarily um, committed to multiple FSS sites or a bigger vision, I think. Um, for the for the sake of this pilot, having um, a stakeholder in your accounting department who um, is is willing to be involved in learning about the program and helping identify um, where in your accounting department operations this could fit um, does not need to be a new role. I think the hours that um, that Chelsea quoted are accurate, and um, and I think there's there's a some time up front um, to kind of, again, learn about where the FSS program would fit, but it does not require the addition of new staff if you're interested in participating in this pilot. That would be my, I feel pretty comfortable saying that. Um, I think it can really be absorbed um, in an existing accounting workflow for a multifamily owner. Um, and I think there's also um, some tools becoming available um, in the, um, uh, property management software that are most commonly used by owners. So we use Yardi, um, and we have uh, a module that allows us to um, track the FSS program in Yardi. And my understanding is that there are going to be um, some changes made available to improve that, which we think will reduce the administrative burden that will be available to other owners. I don't have a timeline, but um, I think that's good news for the FSS program, good news for owners who are interested in getting involved but not quite sure um, what it will require of your accounting team. Um, so I would um, just recommend that, you know, someone from your accounting team be brought in early on discussing the project, um, but that um, I don't think that it requires adding additional staff um, uh, to make a, a pilot program like this work. Okay, thank you, Juliana and Chelsea. Here's another question. Can we group sites together for an FSS program? Uh, this, uh, this is Carissa. Um, yes and no. Um, at this point, um, we we require each separate property to submit a, an action plan on its own, um, addressing the specifics of that property and the residents that live there and the staff that that work there. Um, I, however, uh, <clears throat> I know it would be, a helpful thing would be a few projects could join together and say maybe I'll contribute towards the salary of a program manager, excuse me, a, sorry, a program coordinator, the person who would be providing that case management and the coaching, and that individual um, would provide those services to residents at that group of properties. So um, in that regard, it makes sense to do it. Um, and so I think that it's sort of um, a, a somewhat of a bureaucratic thing that, that HUD could work uh, with you uh, to do. I think what you've just described is, is exactly right. And that's actually, it's something that Compass and POA are working on in Chicago. So POA has um, three sites, three properties separate that are that are pretty close by to each other that are actually served by the same resource center. And so they're the staff at this resource center, um, a couple different folks are actually the, the coaches for the FSS program for all three of those properties. And again, as you mentioned, we submitted separate action plans and also accounting for each, uh, mm -hmm. the escrow accounts at each property are done. Right. Will HUD fund the FSS coordinator position at a multifamily property akin to a resident services coordinator position? 
Okay, so, uh, so this is Carissa. So as I said uh, earlier, uh, there are currently are no grant funds available to fund a family self-sufficiency program in multifamily assisted housing. We hope that grant funds will be available in the next couple of years, um, but right now they are not. So the only, the only HUD, quote unquote HUD funds that might be available are these residual, residual receipts, which I mentioned earlier, are basically excess rental subsidy uh, funds that an owner may have accrued over time. Um, but besides that, otherwise funding for the program coordinator position would have to come from some other uh, non-HUD source. Uh, one participant writes, I work at a housing agency. Can you provide training on a regional level to property management companies? Um, so that's not part of our technical assistance effort at this time. However, uh, we uh, HUD staff could be available to have a conference call uh, with you or to do some um, virtual training like that. Um, so um, again, if, if anybody has any further questions after this is over, um, and the individual who asked that question, if you want to send an email, again, to mf underscore fss at hud.gov, uh, we will see what we can do, uh, to see what we can do and work with you to, to do that. And that contact information is also on uh, the current slide. You can go to the HUD Exchange site listed on this slide to um, email that address Carissa just described. Um, we're still taking questions. We have one question, based on your experience, where or what does a robust FSS program include or look like? Uh, this is Chelsea. Um, that's a great question. Um, I'll share just a couple thoughts, um, and then Juliana, I'd also actually love your perspective too. Jeff, obviously you know FSS well too, so I'm curious if you have thoughts. Um, so, so COMPASS has, of course, uh, we have a clear perspective on one of the core aspects that we think makes a high-performing FSS program, and that's financial coaching. Um, and, you know, that's, we are a financial coaching organization. We've also developed a really strong muscle around FSS, and then probably an even stronger one around how to pair the two together well. Um, but I think from our perspective, um, develop, like the financial capabilities piece and the financial coaching is a big part of, of why we think our FSS programs work well. That is not a requirement for you to join this cohort. Um, you do not have to launch an FSS program that has financial coaching at the center. Although if you do end up in the cohort and you want to talk about it, we, we would love to talk to you about that. Um, but I think that's one piece for sure. Um, two other pieces that I think are related. Um, one is just, I think, buy-in and excitement from your staff. Like having a property manager at the property where you're launching FSS who's really excited to get residents involved, having ambassadors in your, you know, your resident services coordinators and your assistant property managers and your custodial staff, like everyone at the property should be talking about FSS and excited about the program and know about it and getting people, getting people enrolled. And then I think connected to that is another value, like explicitly stated value that Compass has as an organization, which is just a belief in families to achieve their goals and dreams. And it sounds um, simple, but uh, I think we have found and we know that families who live in subsidized housing are often stigmatized and have, um, have systems that are stacked against them and have to jump through hoops to participate in programs like this. And so we put that front and center in the work that we do with families. We'll put it front and center in the technical assistance we'll provide to you all in the cohort. But it's really just believing in families and their ability to achieve the goals that they set for themselves. Yeah, I, I would just add, uh, you know, as Chelsea mentioned, the financial coaching is, a, is one particular model and a very interesting and strong model. Um, you know, there are other agencies that really focus more on the workforce side and really drill down on, on how to have 
um, help people with employment training and with uh, internships and various other aspects that are associated with getting a, increasing, uh, you know, families' earnings. I mean, ultimately, that's a key goal, for, including for the financial coaching side. It's just there are sort of different emphases, and you, as, you know, one of the things we'll do is help you think through kind of what is ultimately the best approach for any particular agency in light of the values that you hold, the goals of the program, and the resources that are available in the community. This is Juliana. I would affirm everything that both Jeff and, and Chelsea said, and. Um, especially having staff who are excited about the program or, um, you know, enough, at least intrigued enough to be engaged. And um, I think come to the conclusion of some of their materials, but related to that, the FSS programs are strongest when they are um, based out of properties that have relatively stable operations. So the property is going through a rehab um, or, um, some sort of other major kind of operational disruption, um, that might not be the best fit for an FSS program right now. Um, but, um, but I think that um, that's just one piece of learning that might be helpful as you're thinking about um, putting together an action plan. Um, and also we have adopted Compass's financial coaching model. So when I think about a robust FSS program, I think there's a ton of value in coaching period, um, and financial coaching in particular. Um, so if your organization works with any, um, either has staff that follow a coaching model that has that belief in families and is client-centered, um, or works with an organization that does coaching, whether it's financial or employment or other, um, we're big believers in that and we've seen a ton of impact. Um, and I would also say I think there's, that HUD allows owners a lot of latitude to get creative with how they implement the program. And so when thinking about a robust FSS program, something that comes to mind for us is like the way that we have designed the opportunity for participants to draw down from their account to contribute towards their goals. And there's a couple of kind of um, mechanical things that you can do in FSS that help families kind of accelerate progress towards goals. So um, I'm sure that this is something, that's something that the cohort could help owners think about. Um, but that's just in thinking about what would make an FSS program robust. I think really just taking advantage of all the latitude that HUD allows to get creative and kind of um, think about really helping families make progress towards the goals that they're setting. Thank you. Uh, another question. Can a scattered site be counted as one property if they all fall under the same HUD CA number? Uh, the answer is yes. Can you conduct outreach to area businesses to help sponsor or pay for programs? So I'm not quite sure if the U is meant technical to the technical assistance uh, folks. Uh, so we'll say it does, and um, we will provide uh, guidance on uh, ways to develop relationships with local service providers, local businesses, um, sort of any any group or entity that might be able to support you in your mission to provide a robust FSS program. Um, doing that is very important and of course the manner in which people do that will also depend on where they are uh, and, and, the, and the, 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 the types of places, uh, government agencies, nonprofits, businesses that are in their community. But we generally do um, encourage uh, our owners and agents to, to do that, to try to get as much community support as possible. What is the time commitment to participate in the technical assistance? For instance, how many hours per week or per month? Well, yeah, I can, uh, Take a stab at that. Um, so yeah, so this again, I think it's a, it's a little bit tough to answer because, as I mentioned, launching an access program involves a lot of different people, and so I don't think it would be incredibly helpful to share like the total number of hours. But I think just to give you a little bit better sense, 
Um, you know, we'll have a series of webinars over the nine months that will be an hour to two hours apiece, so a hand, there'll be a handful of those. The Compass course to actually go through it is maybe four to five hours total. Um, and then I think, but I think the like the bulk of the work that you'll be doing is really in giving likes to your program. So outside of the time that we're spending with you, actually drafting your action plan and creating your outreach materials and thinking about what your intake appointment checklist should look like, those types of things. Um, and that that sort of depending on where you are in program launch will 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 determine who on your team is involved. So I think in the very beginning of TA when you're trying to set up your systems and aligning stakeholders, you'll have your leadership involved a little bit more, and then it, it'll sort of get handed off more to uh, the on-site staff at the property and the program delivery, uh, services delivery team, who are actually going to get trained on how to operate the program day to day. Um, so that, that will kind of move as, as we go through the, the TA, uh, but I hope that's helpful in clarifying a little bit. Okay, maybe we do we might have time for one more question. I think we have time for one more question. Based on the size of the property, is there a minimum resident participation requirement, such as 20%? Um, for the multifamily housing program, there is not at this time. Um, at a point where we have grant funds, we may at that time uh, designate a minimum, but now there is none since uh, the funding would come from a non-HUD source in multifamily housing. So on that happy note, uh, I'll close. This, again, this is Carissa Janice at, at headquarters. Um, you've heard what, about what a fabulous program FSS is. We're so excited that so many of you have um, have tuned have have tuned in or called in to this webcast and are interested. Um, you know, it, it, the the interest is before anything else. One's interest is is really the most valuable. So again, thank you, thank you if you're exploring the idea. Please, thank you for spending the time. And should you have more questions? Uh, again, please uh, email that mailbox, mf underscore fss at hud.gov. We will be able to answer uh, more questions. Um, I mentioned we do have a technical assistance FAQ of sorts on our HUD Exchange webpage, um, and uh, we will add additional questions to that as we get them. Um, uh, and. Um, um, uh, and so we we hope that that's been helpful. I'm sure I'm sure that there are still many questions that people have. But again, follow up with us if you need to. Um, again, the submission date is October 8th. Um, we are unsure as to how many applications we will get, um, and so we will try to accommodate as many people as possible. If we have a, a very large um, if we have a very large amount of interest, uh, we may hold people's applications for a future technical assistance effort or pro try to provide some other type of assistance. And I should, I should mention that um, those that join the cohort, um, they will be contributing to uh, contributing to an effort um, to allow us to see how to best educate and assist owners and agents um, in developing and implementing F an FSS program. So the, it's a helpful thing we will, both HUD, not both HUD and our technical assistance providers and our participating owners and agents will all be contributing to an effort to forwarding uh, the FSS program to multifamily housing properties. Does anybody have any other final things they'd like to say? No, just thanks for uh, thanks for listening, and, and we hope you apply. All right, thank you very much, everybody.